Hey everyone, it's Alexis with So Sweet Monogramming and So Sweet Academy. And today for our um, Christmas, what is it, Christmas design or Christmas craft idea, we're going to be working with embroidery. And I am, um, as you all see, let's see if it's coming up there. Uh, there we go. So as you all can see, I am Alexis from So Sweet Monogramming. Um, you can see all the links to like my Facebook page, my Instagram, YouTube, if you need some more help with embroidery or if you're interested in learning more. But today's craft that we're going to be working with is a Christmas stocking. This one is actually um, burlap, a burlap stocking. So I'll show you an example of one that I've already done. Hey everyone that's joining, Stacia, Valerie, Bernetta, how are y'all? Janae, hope y'all are having a good day. But this, I did this stocking, I did the top part, um, I did this actual stocking on a multi-needle, especially this part right here, because you have to have that free arm. But this top part um, was also done on the multi-needle, it was done with applique. Where is it? I can't see. It's kind of hard. Oh, there we go. Um, it's applique, but I wanted to show you how you can do it on a single needle. The machine that I'll be working with is a Brother PE800. Let's see if I can show you real quick. You have to excuse my space over there because um, guess who has not finished decorating for Christmas? Uh, me. So this is the Brother PE800, okay? And what I'm gonna do first is basically prepare my hoop and then um, I'll show you the machine part. So I have, for this machine, I have a um, five by seven hoop. And I also have, I purchased the extra ones, which is a four by four hoop. I was just telling my academy last night that even though it has a five by seven hoop, I love doing my smaller things on the four by four. So if you are looking to get into one of these machines um, and you only have enough to purchase a four by four, don't don't worry you can still do a whole lot with it you can do ornaments as a matter of fact maybe my next one that i do next week i might do an ornament okay all right so let's get started the first thing we're going to use is going to be and i didn't link all of my supplies i can link all of my supplies when i'm done um just in case you all want to do this on your own i did actually link where you can get the stocking from so this is one that i did for my daughter already um, it's her initials, but we're going to do the back of it. And on the back, we're going to put um, Dear Santa, I can explain, or, some, or Dear Santa, I've been good. Something that has to do with her trying to make a rebuttal as to why she should get all these gifts that she wants for Christmas. And um, also currently why she should get her phone back. I have a 12-year-old 7th grader. And... Um, she got her phone taken away and she has been trying to convince me lately so I felt like this one was very 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 appropriate for her um hey Veronica hey Tanya hey Jacqueline so first what we do we get closer so you can see it and once we're closer let's get a good bird's eye view going there um, this hoop, as well as all of your other hoops, is going to have a notch right there, and then there's a corresponding notch, where is that, right here, all right? You sandwich your tearaway stabilizer, and you match your notches up at the top. I usually like to just pinch it together up here. I take my finger in an L shape, and I push it down and in. You can then find your center with your um, grid. So don't throw that grid away. I always just, mark, uh -oh, let's use the other side. Let's use the blue side. I usually always just mark my grid. I've kind of gotten to the point now that I don't really use it, but when I'm teaching, I like to make sure everyone uses their grid mainly because it just helps you find your placement. And as you all are hopping on, if you have an embroidery machine or if you embroider, let me know. 
let me know. Tell me what kind of machine you use. Or if you're interested in it, let me know that too. Because I can go back and read the notes and, you know, chit chat with you. But like I said, I already did the front. So now I'm going to go back and do the back. You want to match up your center. So the way I do that is really easy. I just take it, fold it in half. All right, you can either use a tape measure or you can fold it in half. And once you do that, take a water soluble pen. And I'm just gonna mark the middle. Okay, so that's gonna let me know that once I get it on my hoop, that's my center. Oh, another thing I also do just to let me know which way is up, I'm just gonna do like a like an A or something right there, just to let me know that that is the bottom. Because sometimes when you're contorting this and everything, you, you forget which way is up. Um, the best thing about doing it on the single needle is you don't have to turn it inside out like you do the multi-needle as much. So let's see. Hopefully I've left enough room here for my design. If not, I will quickly just do another one or downsize it. The way we get it on here to stay, I'm gonna use spray adhesive. There's a lot of different brands that you can use. This one comes from Joann's. It's the cheapest one that I, that I find. So I just spray it right on here. A lot of people don't like to spray it on their hoop because it'll make it gunky, but if it does, just get you some, um, some cleaner. You can clean it off that way. So two ways. You either fold it in half, match it up with the center here, your dots and everything. And then open it out, okay? Okay. And I'm gonna move it over actually, because that's not really centered. Now that's centered. Now that looks better. Hey, Anastasia. I also like to pin it down just for a little more security. And I'm just gonna pin it out of the way. Um, as of right now, I'm just gonna pin that top part. If this were something like cotton, um, or something stretchy, I'd make sure I pin all the way around, but I wanna see if I have enough room to do all this. So let's see, okay? Now, moving on to the machine, I have already saved my design. So what I usually do in my academy um, or in any of my learning tutorials, I start you off from a program called So What Pro and um, start you from there to actually learn how to save your design and then pull it up. But for the sake of today's training, we're gonna just start with um, loading my USB. All right, so it's already saved on here. Let's put it in the side of your machine. Push that, it's gonna move the carriage. It tells you all that. All that fun noise. Do I wanna recall the previous um, Design, no, I don't. That was from last night. So I'm gonna hit cancel and then use my USB port, um, my USB drive to pull up everything I need. You wanna pull your thread through from your previous project. While we're waiting on that, you can go ahead and load your hoop on your machine. So I just flatten everything out and just slide it right under, just like that. Okay. And it looks like we're gonna have enough room. We're gonna have to just kind of play around with it and finagle it. But um, with these, with with the single needle, you do have to know how to you know move everything around to get it to fit. If you wanted a bigger surface area, you would definitely have to use like a multi needle so that you have that free arm. All right, so I'm gonna click. Well, not click, but you know, arrow over to my design, and it's this one right here. It says, "Dear Santa, define good." All right, like, what is your definition of good, Santa? Like, are we on the same playing field, okay? Then we gotta rotate it, because as of right now, if I stitch it just like this, it is going to um, 
stitch sideways. So I want to rotate it 90 degrees and I already put my A there to let me know which side is up. Then once I rotate it, I go to OK. And then I need to find the center because I marked my center. Um, and to do that, you're going to go end edit and these arrows actually help you move it down. So I'm just going to move it down to where I put that dot. I'm going to look down at it. So that looks centered, but even still, sometimes this little thing gets tricky on us. So I want to still check it to make sure. Let's move that out of the way. Uh, come on. There's a little piece underneath here. Um, and that's one other thing about stitching with your... Um, with a single needle, you just want to make sure everything is always out of the way. All right, so we look good there. Now I want to see the top and the bottom. Hey, Jamie. Um, the top of it looks good there. So let's go all the way down to the... Oh, so that's perfect, y'all. We just, we are cooking with oil. Grease, oil. Oh, yes. We got plenty of room. We have plenty of room. Um, I am going to pin the bottom because I don't want it to move. Put one more pin here, like down in this area, because I don't want that to come off. Okay? Now you put it back on. The main thing is just don't be afraid and also stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. A lot of times when people have problems with their designs or with their um, project, it's because it wasn't stabilized very well. It bunches up. Hey, Shonda. Now, I am going to check it one more time for my placement. There, it's going to give me a good amount of room. So it's not a huge design. I actually sized it down some before we started. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to go to the end embroidery so that we can see which one is going to stitch out first. And I always like to decrease my tension. Um, it's a 16 minute stitch. It says 16 minutes, but we have to change out our um, thread. So it's actually going to be a little more than 16 minutes. The way you thread it, you start here. There's numbers going around and down. Start with number one. Loop two, three, up, down, around, four, five, through that tunnel. Six is a latch area. Seven is like a little crevice. Eight cuts your thread. Nine threads your thread. All right, so that was a lot to take in. It's definitely something that you have to practice and go a little slower if you're not used to it. But it's a whole map track here. So it's not worst case scenario. Like You can do it, I promise. Um, and we put our presser foot down, green means go, hit the green button. What I usually do, once I hit the green button, I kind of hover over it for a minute just to make sure it doesn't get away from me because um, this thing goes a little faster than the previous one. So here we go. So we may be okay. And I didn't check my bobbin. I hope I have enough room. If you have to hold everything, be careful because this machine will get your finger and it will hurt so I'm just holding everything out of the way and protecting my finger Um, Tamika, this is the Brother PE800. The biggest hoop size that it can do without the repositional hoops is a 5x7. The hoop size that I'm using right now is a 4x4. Four four.
see if I can get y'all closer. Hold on. Hold on, my machine is stuck on there. Give me a second. There we go. favorite things to stitch um once i'm done if i remember i'll run to the back i just did a lightning mcqueen and a what is it what's the name of that thing paw patrol um on my multi-needle but as you can see it can be done on the single needle right now this machine i didn't check it as of before we went live but in the recent days, this machine has been anywhere from $700 to $1,000. Um, it has gone up lately. It's usually, I bought mine at the beginning of the year for like $600. So it, it's on Amazon. But keep an eye on it because some days it can be super expensive and the next thing you know, it's cheaper. Um, so we go, oh, I was looking at the brother six twenty five. Can't afford that one. Um, listen, if you if you can splurge just a little, if like if you can find the money, I'm telling you, try for the eight hundred because once you get the hang of it, you're gonna want to do bigger surface areas. Um, I do understand that you know money sometimes is a determining factor. It real quick because I want to get this over, but um, I do know that money is a determining factor. I'm not gonna act like you know, money is not an issue, but I'm telling you, if you if you can at all, try and get the bigger one, and then once you get it and learn it, you can make that money back in no time. Um, I've really I have really taught a lot of my embroidery students how to make a fast $1,000. And um, if you think of it like that, you basically paid for your machine. You could literally get this machine, learn how to do one thing, one technique, and make $1,000 by Christmas. Now, I'm not saying something like shirts or something like that. I'm saying one technique like a, um, ornaments or something. Something that's really, really, really easy to do. Open face here. And I think, you know what, that's what I'll do my next tutorial on. I want it to be really functional to help you all, or all of us, make money. Because that's, I don't know about y'all, but I like to make money. And um, just show you how to make some really quick Christmas money if you can get this before then. Whoa, come back here. All right, so our next color is white. But like, let's say someone were to do these stockings or something. These stockings right now are um, $5 plus, plus shipping. Um, I didn't do my math beforehand and uh, math isn't my favorite thing in the world. But let's just say you sold these stockings for 15 to 20 dollars or however much per set just calculate how many of those you would need to sell just to make a good 20 i mean make a good thousand bucks post it on facebook marketplace post it on etsy post it on your instagram all that stuff and booyah money okay you're welcome that tip was free but that's what I did. I um I made enough money one year and I took my daughter to Disney on a Disney cruise with the money that I made um, stitching out Easter bunnies. Hey Michelle. 
$1,200 at Walmart? Yeah. Yep, so. Oh, another thing, if you can't find it um, cheaper, look on the. Okay. If you can't, and I'm just cutting my threads as I go, because this thing gets, it gets all bunched up, if not. Um, look for, look for some things on, look for some of the deals on Facebook Marketplace. I have helped a couple people find theirs on there. People are reselling it. Keep that in mind, and um, Tamika, let me know. Like, DM me. Like, literally, I, I want to know if you get one. And I saw a couple of my Academy members hop on. If y'all rock with me and y'all know me, say hey. Like, something like hashtag Academy or so sweet. You know, something. Throw up a smoke signal. What color is next? So, the way I know what color is coming up next... See right here, um, the one at the top, it's red. So I gotta switch back to red because on my single needle here, I can't load anything except for like one at, one at a time. So that's what we do. We go back and forth, back and forth. Hey, Tamara. Up down around, see how fast? Once you get the hang of it, this threading situation is really easy. That's a good one too. The um, the combo. I had I had one of those, but I found that I I hated um, switching out to the machine part, mainly because I have a machine already. And sometimes, especially when I was doing masks, I wanted to be able to stitch and sew at the same time. But those um, the combo one is really good. Is it's it's compact if you're okay with stitching it out. But I know a lot of people that got the that got the combo and that they're really happy with that one. Good choice. We're gonna have a lot of strings left over. You gotta open it up and, and try it. Christmas is coming up and you could be making some good things. With some good YouTube videos. Um, some good tutorials. Next, our color is going to be green. I'm going to use like a lighter green. You know, lately Christmas green has not been that, that hunter green. It's been more like this cute little neon green thing here. Did you digitize the software? Do you use it? No. So I use an on-screen editing software. I would love to know how to digitize, but y'all, that is a whole nother ministry in itself, okay? Um, I am one day going to sit down and learn digitizing, but right now I just, it's easier for me and faster to just, um, 
to just purchase the files. They're, they're really cheap. A lot of places run sales. Sometimes they're a dollar. Sometimes um, different sites run them for free when they first introduce them. Or I have a personal, um, I have a group of digitizers that I work personally with anytime I need something specifically done. So, But as far as on-screen editing software, I use um, So What Pro. Super easy to use. choose to like follow me and learn this embroidery journey let me tell you how I feel about it I believe in making mistakes I believe in figuring it out as you go my motto is on my shirt it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be pretty so if this is you all's first time meeting me that's that's what I stand for because we're gonna mess up that's that is inevitable but Got, once you mess up your project, you got to figure out how to fix that thing. And that's what I do. I've been on live before, and I've stitched the thing upside down. I've stitched it on the wrong side. I've stitched things together. Some of my projects were not salvageable, and some were. Um, so that's where I really get a lot of my enjoyment is just figuring it all out. Once this one is done, I will load this um, video on YouTube also. So if you want to go back and look at it. And don't just think you have to use this stocking. You can use different types of stockings. Um, the fluffy ones at Walmart or Dollar Tree, any of those are possible. Um, I know a lot of you all do vinyl. This is use vinyl on this stocking it up there. I'm assuming it's going to come over here to this right side. Hey Shirley. All right, so here we go. It's going up to the top. Okay, there we go. That was a smooth transition. And if you're afraid of, you know, putting your fingers as close, because this machine does go fast. You can, some people have used tongs. Some people have pinned it out of the way. I just watch it, watch my fingers around it, and I'm, I'm really careful. And I pray. <laughs> I pray. I pray that my fingers never get caught. When I learned how to do this, I actually, um, I thought that you could just put it on here, move everything out, um, and walk away from it. That's not the case. You, 
you have to babysit this little guy. Because otherwise, it will eat your project up. And what I mean is, it'll stitch over the top of it. left chest placements with this size. With this size, you can do um, logos. It'll just take a little longer on here, but it's very possible. Very, very, very possible. Walmart has the six twenty-five for three sixty right now. I was thinking getting it as a starter. I, I mean, I think that's a good idea. If you if if you're okay with that hoop size, I really do think that's a good idea. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna tell anybody not to get a machine. Um, I'll just tell you that I know you're gonna be ready for another one soon. As soon as you get the hang of it, you're gonna be like, oh, what's next? What is next? But listen, get. Start where you can, master it, and you know, move on. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I had my um, I had my multi needle for, I mean, my single needle for years. I've been doing this for about 11, 12 years, some somewhere along that line. Um, and I had my single needle first for years. And y'all, I, I made a lot of money. I made a, a ton of money on my single needle. So, don't think for a minute that you can't. We switch back to so this is the part where it's, it's literally like switching back and forth green red green red just depending on oh just depending on your design but we're almost done i told you this was a really quick design um just think of how many of these you can crank out what i'm gonna do when i do my different segments i'm just gonna really focus on um on quick designs quick money making projects Come on. All right, let's see. Now, needles down. Let me press your face down. Green means go. Like we literally had to change it for that little bitty piece. line underneath the word good because you know we said santa define good like good like good good what do you mean by good so let's do that line underneath there up down around loop it i hold the thread back here i'm not holding it super tight i'm just holding it so that it doesn't continue to unwind does that make sense? Hey, Marie. 
All right, press her foot down. Green means go, last little part. I don't have to do much holding here. embroidering raise your presser foot I lift from the back um, push it off there let's get back up here um, all right so now we have it I did it on both sides this was a previous tutorial that I did but I want to show you the back so that's what it looks like there on the hoop after we've stitched it that's what the back of it looks like take your pins out You can tear it off or you can take it off the hoop first. I'm gonna take it off the hoop first. It really, uh, it really doesn't matter which one you do, but it's called tear away. So you literally just tear it, tear it off, tear your stabilizer off. Put it back on the right side. So you're gonna fold your cuff back over And I'm going to cut my threads. I'm gonna use this. Sometimes you can use like smaller snips. It'll get in there easier. But let's see, go down some. Um, I'm just gonna snip. Sometimes you can get a, um, what's it called? A pair of tweezers too. Get under there. Snip it. There are some of the machines that are sold. I don't think the ones on Amazon do, but there are some of the machines that are sold by like the dealer that cut your threads in between. But if not, I mean, you just cut them as you go. Some people, I've seen some people cut it during the, um, in between each thread color. It just depends, it's personal preference. And sometimes people don't cut it at all. Um, it just depends on how how noticeable it is for me as to whether I cut it. But I'm just gonna cut the main ones and then I'll go back later with my snips. And recut. Okay. Uh, one more. So there you have it, folks. This right here is my water soluble mark. Let's see if I got some water. Nope. If you take like a water, um, a drop of water or something or a steamer, you can get that out real easily. But this was our project. It was done on our Brother PE800 single needle embroidery machine. Um, I probably, I'll, you know, I'll go back and I'll link the actual machine to see how much it is right now on Amazon. Um, and if you, you know, if you want to get one, get one and follow me for embroidery tips and tricks. I go live every Sunday in my group. It's so sweet to learn on Facebook. I think I linked it above. Um, every Sunday at 5 o'clock p.m. live at 5 it's called so sweet Sunday and I do a stitch out on either here on my single needle or on my multi needle which is a brother PR 655 six needle and um, yeah I just answer a lot of questions and do a lot of fun projects sometimes we mess up sometimes we don't but it's just a good hangout time all right so that's what we have it's a Christmas stocking for the Christmas time. So this is the one I did on here today. I did this one previously. I used, y'all, I love 
Love Love. You see that shimmery? That is called metallic thread, but I, I did not know how this machine was feeling today. I did not know if it was feeling like doing metallic thread because anybody that does embroidery also, they know that the metallic thread sometimes likes to be temperamental and break. So for this actual project and the sake of getting through it, I made sure I used just regular thread. So keep that in mind. All right. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. And remember, it does not have to be perfect, but it has to be pretty. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the DMs or leave your questions or comments below here. And um, I'll answer them as I see them come up. All right, y'all have a great Friday. Be safe and stay warm. If you're somewhere cold, enjoy it if you're somewhere warm. And I will see you all later. Tune in next time to see who has something good for us. All right, bye.